In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a complete CAT engine service, including oil and fuel and oil filters for your truck, bus, or RV engine. So we have a single turbo C15 here. We're going to be changing both of the fuel filters, your primary fuel filter and your secondary fuel filter also the engine oil and the oil filter now this video is going to show you how i do oil changes and the rationale behind it it's not to say how some people do it's wrong it's just how i do it so we have your oil filter there and there's a coolant conditioner now some people call those filters that's not a filter you should not change that with every service or else it'll throw your coolant concentration off so don't worry about that now here we have your oil pan and your oil filter. This is on the exhaust side of the engine. Now this is a single turbo C15 like I said, but these principles are going to apply to all cat truck engines. So, first thing I like to do is poke a hole in the bottom of the oil filter. And the reason for that is twofold. First off, that oil filter holds quite a bit of oil, so it's nice to have it drain out before trying to remove the filter. And the next thing I'm going to do is loosen the drain plug and it's best to loosen the drain plug in the furthest part of the engine because typically these engines tilt back so by the rear of the engine it's a lower point so you want to drain the most oil possible so usually the rear drain plug now also on an oil filter at least in our shops they're supposed to have a hole in them when they're drained overnight and that's supposed to mean that they're completely drained so poking that hole also helps with that now whether it's from over torquing or just from the plug being steel and these drain pans being cast aluminum the drain pan plugs get really tight um, I've had guys put three quarter inch impacts trying to break those loose um, they get really really tight so what I usually do is I don't try to loosen it with a ratchet. I usually hit it with an impact to loosen it. Um, it's not going to damage it. And what I'll do is I just try to loosen it and then I take the plug out by hand. Now you always want to be careful with this because you should always do an oil change when the oil is hot to make sure all the contaminants have stayed in the oil. If you do it when it's cold, you're not going to drain as many contaminants out of the oil. So do the oil change with the engine as hot as possible. Yes, it's harder and it's obviously hotter but it it hit, really helps get a clean oil change so the oil viscosity is obviously lower because it's hot and check your drain pan plug for any metal debris because it's a magnet on the end I'd like to take a minute to talk about oil filter pliers and oil filter strap wrenches um, when I first started in the industry I really liked the pliers which were on the far left because they're fairly universal but over the years I've learned to hate them um, because typically they tend to crush the filters um, you spend more strength trying to put enough friction on the pliers and crush the filter than you do actually turning it so even though you'll get more leverage with those style pliers I found that the band style which is the type with the red handle and then the one that OTC makes with the half inch drive with the black band really are the way to go um, that way you can tighten the filters with them and loosen them you get they do not slip as much as the plier type and then on the bottom if they're really stuck that's a half inch drive three-legged filter socket and that'll take off just about any filter that gets stuck so we have our oil filter here which has been drained which is going to make removing it a lot less messy and we're going to use our band type filter wrench strap wrench to remove it and hopefully it was not over tightened when installed which it's moving initially which means it was not over tightened and filters just as most bolts are are counterclockwise to loosen and clockwise to tighten now just remember when you're standing up looking down it's it's kind of upside down to you so it's going to seem like you're going clockwise to loosen it but you're not so spin the filter off and usually it's a good idea to keep that drain pan under the filter so when it drops 
there's not a big oily mess because we've already drained the filter. And then what you want to do is you want to stick your hand up in there and make sure that the filter gasket was removed with the filter and it's not still on the filter housing. And next thing we're going to do is measure our drain plug size. Now if you look at this measurement, it's an inch and an eighth. And you might be wondering why am I measuring the oil drain plug thread size? Well the reason is, is because I typically torque these. Now that might seem a little ridiculous to most people, but I do it for one reason, and that's because if that falls out, that can cause some real damage and a headache. So we have a C style, according to Cat, which has the, uh, the O-ring inserted into the drain plug. And we have an eight in inch and an eighth thread size. So if you look on that, the torque for that drain plug is only 52 plus or minus eight. So basically 60 foot pounds. That inch and an eighth drain plug only torques to 60 foot pounds. Now most guys I know, they hit them with a half inch impact to tighten them. And most half inch impacts put out somewhere between two and 400 foot pounds. So what you're basically doing is you're gonna damage that oil pan, which that oil pan is pretty expensive. We're talking at least a thousand bucks and they're paying a change. So I torque them. I torque pretty much all oil drain plugs. Now, on these bigger ones, I'll typically torque it a little over what it specifies. So this is supposed to be torqued to 60. I usually take it to 60 and then a little past, so about 70, 75 foot-pounds. And then I torque stripe it. Now, most guys don't do that, but it's just, it gives me peace of mind and you're not going to damage that aluminum drain pan. So we have our new oil filter here. And I'm going to just apply oil to the gasket area but I'm not going to pre-fill it. Cat does not want you to pre-fill your oil filters. It also doesn't want you to pre-fill your fuel filters, but I'm going to show you the proper way to do that. So I'm going to install this oil filter onto here. Now these oil filters can be a pain sometimes getting them started. Um, but after you've done a bunch, you'll get the hang of it. And um, Another good thing about installing them without oil in it is it makes installing a lot easier because you don't have, you know, 10 pounds of oil inside this filter you're trying to stick up in there. Now, what's the proper torque for an oil filter? Well, on an oil filter, Cat recommends that you stop. Once it's, it stops, you're going to take it a full turn. So we had stopped on one. If you can see the little dash marks, it has a dash mark and a number. So we stopped around one when we just spun it on. So we need to take it all the way to the other one. Now I don't typically go by the dash marks. What I do is I put it on hand tight, about as tight as I can get it, just with my bare hands. And then I take it three small turns with the strap wrench. And you'll see we're back at one. So that kind of works as a little trick is just do it you know, about as hand tight as you can get it, depending on how strong you are, obviously. And then three little, you know, three little push turns, whatever you can get in there. And that'll be about right. Then you mark it with whatever you're going to put, the date, the mileage, your initials. And then we're going to move on to the fuel filters. So it's always a good idea to change both fuel filters. And that would be your primary filter here. This goes from your tank through that filter and then up to the transfer pump. And most of the primaries, they have a secondary small gasket on the threaded side. Then we're going to loosen the secondary filter, which is usually inside the frame rail and is quite difficult to get to. Now, along with this service, I also lubed the chassis, meaning I hit all the zerk, the grease zerks was grease, and I checked the air filter, and I checked the coolant level but I'm not going to show you how to do this in the video. This is basically just doing the engine service. So here we are, our new filter. And what I've done is you don't want to fill filters from the center because that's the clean side. So I like to pre-fill the fuel filters. It can damage the injectors to run them dry. So what I do is over a trash can or a drain pan is I cap the center and then I'll fill it with clean diesel fuel. And I'm going to show you in a minute the best place to get clean diesel fuel. And it's not from siphoning it from the tank. So we're going to wait till that filter's pretty much full and then install it. 
So I have this hose ran from the compu chick fitting on the top of the secondary fuel filter housing that runs to a ball valve. And while the engine's running, you can drain fuel from this system under pressure, and this fuel has been filtered by both filters. Now, I do this before or after doing the service. This, uh, this part of the video is not in the timeline correctly. Obviously, you do not want to run an engine without oil or filters. And, um, you know, if you do this at the beginning, you'll have clean fuel for priming your fuel filters, all right? So I've installed the new filters. I've already installed the secondary. I'm going to show you how I do the fuel filters. Now these only need a full three quarter turn after installing. So what I do is I usually do it hand tight with single hand and then I do three small turns. And that's about correct for their three quarter turn um, fuel filters. So, we have put 9.34 gallons in this engine. Uh, most of the cat bigger engines, the C15s and the C13s, take about 10 gallons. So, we have overfilled, according to this customer's uh, dipstick, the oil. Now, why have I done that? Because, remember, your oil filter is empty. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start up the engine and wait for it to build oil pressure and then run it for a few seconds after that point. Now these take anywhere from five to 10 seconds to build oil pressure after you've done an oil change. And you shouldn't concern you too much about the engine not having oil pressure immediately because even if you pre-filled the oil filter, as you can see, the oil level's a little low. Even if you pre-filled that oil filter, it would take a few seconds for it to build prime. But CAT does not recommend priming your oil filters. And it makes doing the service easier too, not priming the oil filters. And it's not going to hurt that engine. When it's running at idle, there's hardly any load on the bearings. Not only that, the bearings are awash with oil already from oil in the oil galley, from before the oil change, on the bearings, in the crankshaft, in the camshaft. Um, Cat knows what they're talking about. So I added 0.5 more gallons of oil. Now this is with the engine off, obviously. And since the engine had already ran, the oil filter will be full. And we are right at the full mark. And that's going to make a happy customer. So that finishes our engine service. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section. Thank you.